hello and welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to talk about the most interesting way to change a sky in Photoshop. Uh, but this is just a great selection. I don't know if I can say great selection technique. It's a very interesting selection technique that is occasionally useful and just great to know how to do. So we're going to try to breeze through this pretty quickly. We're going to replace this sky over this field with this sky. Let's just say we, we just flat out prefer these clouds. We want to replace this. But the problem is... We've got tops of trees and tops of trees, as you may well know if you've done any landscape photography and tried to adjust or change the sky, tops of trees are a pain in the neck because they're very transparent and lots of other reasons. Um, so instead of dwelling on the difficulty of trees, well, actually, I'm selling a course over on tutfit.com all about how to retouch images. There's a link right there. Boom. It just appeared in the top of this video. It's 27 bucks. It supports tutfit.com. It allows me to keep creating video tutorials for your enjoyment. If you pick it up, great. If not, hey, well, you still got plenty of free tutorials on this channel, and I love you all the same. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the lasso tool, and before you say, what? Check it out. We're going to draw just a small selection here in the sky, and then I'm going to go select, grow, and it's going to grow my selection. It's going to select adjoining pixels of similar color. So we just selected a little bit of blue, and boom, you can see it expanded out quite a bit. Let's go select, grow again. And, well, look at that. It expanded even more. Uh, what if we encapsulate this cloud here? So I'm going to just hold down my shift key and circle over this cloud. Whoop, I don't want to just circle over the cloud there. Maybe I'll circle over that little cloud too. So now we've got some white involved. Let's go select and choose grow again. And, well, we expanded even further. We didn't necessarily pick up much white, but... Let's try something else. We also have this similar option. See, the grow option increases your selection just based upon pixels that are touching your original initial selection. Similar will reach into, like reach into the foliage here, and in theory should, I haven't really tested this out, but it should pick up even the blues and some of the white even that we've got going on back there. So let's try it out. We're gonna go select, similar. Ooh, look at that. It definitely did expand into the trees. Let's keep growing this. Select, grow. Um, we can actually use the lasso tool. Hold down the shift key. We can grab this whole cloud up top. That doesn't really need any kind of special selection. We can grab this cloud here. Uh, we can grab this cloud down here. Great. All right, let's try this again. Select. Uh, let's go grow again. Grow. Ooh, look at that. We grew quite a bit. Actually, we're all the way down to the tree line, so I don't know that I want to grow anymore. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm just going to grab these clouds, because these clouds are all isolated within our selection, right? I don't have to worry about an edge anywhere. Cool. We've got edge stuff selected, edge stuff selected. Maybe the cloud is not as perfectly selected as I would like, but I think we got a pretty, a pretty decent selection. So what I'm going to do is go select, or actually, because I'm in the lasso tool, I can just hit the refine edge button. It is select refine edge. And I'm going to choose to show it as the red overlay. I'm going to tick on smart radius, and I'm just going to increase the radius to like f right around five pixels. Because the bulk of this stuff here with the trees, um, as you're going to see as I zoom in here, is it's just, it's right on the edge. It's very close to the edge. Maybe I need to go a little bit more than five pixels, though. Maybe something like... I don't know, eight or nine, if my computer decides to respond. There we go. Um, and one of the things you can also do is you can gently go over the edge of the trees with the Refine Radius tool. You want to make sure you use a fairly small brush, though. Like, even this brush here that's, that I have is too big. I'm going to use the left bracket key and make my brush a bit smaller. I'm just going to paint over, like, this tree down here. All right, let's see if we can pick some of that up. And you'll see, yep, in fact, we did pick some of that up. Let's see if we can make the selection around that tree a little bit better. All right, so we're just painting along what we know is the very edge of our trees. I'm just saying, hey, Photoshop, clean that up for me, would you? So I'm going to go over the edge of these trees really quickly. All right, so you can see there, we just painted over the edge, and basically that the the refine radius tool is just going to tell Photoshop's refine edge. Look, this is really the edge, and I know it looks a little halo-y. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit here, and we're going to do a couple things to this. It's not perfect at all, but it's very close. We're going to choose to decontaminate these colors. Um, and if I boost this up and really deca decontaminate the colors, you can see we get one thing. If I pull it back, we get another. I actually don't want to decontaminate them too much. Just a little bit, so we're getting the edge, maybe even get a touch of blue on the edge. After all, we're replacing it with a fairly similar blue sky. So this, is, this should be like shooting fish in a barrel almost. We're going to shift the edge and just subtract it just a little bit. 
It's just going to help clear away some of that junk that we see. And we're going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask. So go ahead and hit OK. You're going to see what we've got is uh, the sky. Most importantly, we have a layer mask. I don't really care about having this layer. I'm going to turn the background layer back on and I'm going to shut this layer off. What I'm going to do now is drag this image into uh, this initial image, hold down my shift key, it's going to drop it right into the middle. Command or control T, hold down the shift and the alt or option icon uh, buttons, and I'm going to pull the sky up, and I'm going to shift the sky down a little bit. There we go. Enter or return to commit that change. Great. Now we can just hold down the alt or option key and drag this mask up and drop it on that layer. And you can see, voila, we have replaced the sky. Now if we zoom in, you can see that there is still, there's, there's some mess going on here on the edges of this mask. So what we would need to do is select the mask, grab our brush tool, set the brush tool to the blend mode of, you guessed it, soft light, zoom out a little bit. Now, here's what's important. I'm going to alt or option click on that layer mask so we can see the alpha channel. I want to paint with the color white. So we're covering up, I'm going to alt or option clicking the mask again to get out of the alpha channel, by the way. I want to paint with white because I want to kind of cover up some of that colored fringiness. All right, so I'm going to just flip set white as my foreground color and I'm going to just, you know, tap gently along the edge of my trees here just, you know, gently. And because I'm in the soft light blend mode, I'm not really painting away a uh, mask that is solid white. I'm just getting kind of semi-transparent um, black stuff that's hanging out and just kind of zapping it away to cause the top of my trees to blend a little bit more naturally with uh, the background. So I would just go around the tops of my trees, hit all this stuff with this, you know, kind of clean it up, make sure it's blending nicely and, uh, you know, very, very quickly relatively speaking, that is. Uh, we have a pretty nice complete sky replacement over a very, very difficult to replace line of trees. Now, obviously, we have a similar blue sky, so it's going to blend fairly easily, fairly quickly. If you were replacing this with a full-on sunset, there would be other issues. Not only would it be a radical color change, but the direction of sunlight in the field would not match what the eye is looking for in a sky that is a obviously a sunset. So you do still want to replace it with, uh, with a sky that's at least somewhat similar. Uh, but at this point, you can just go and you know do whatever you want. Throw a black and white adjustment layer on this, darken up the blues, uh, brighten up the yellows, something like that. Maybe set it to a blend mode of multiply. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's kind of a crazy effect. Reduce the opacity a little bit, see what we get. Uh, not bad, you know? So you can just mess around with it and see what you get. Um, but that's it. So a quick sky replacement, what I consider an interesting way to replace the sky. It's more fun than anything else, but it is great to know that you have those two little grow and similar features available to you uh, in Photoshop and always waiting for you to use them. Chances are you've never used them before. So for grow and similar and replacing a sky in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, it's me again. Your friendly neighborhood tutorial provider. You've come to the end of this tutorial, but guess what? The goodness doesn't have to stop now because, of course, after you hit the like button for this video, you got to subscribe to this channel. It's one of the best tutorial channels on the web. I mean, I make the tutorials, so it's pretty good, I think. After that, make sure you go sign up for the tutvid.com newsletter. You're going to get a free guide full of time-saving tips and tricks for Photoshop. It's amazing. And then, of course, if you're into the social media thing, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, or Instagram. I've got all the links right down in the description to this video. Catch you in the next video, guys. I will, right? Because, of course, you'll be subscribed.